to bring back old fears. Tonight's story is my teddy. Mom, can I please get this teddy bear? Please, I'll never ask for another thing. Willa clasped her hands together and gazed longingly at the stuffed teddy bear staring at her from the department store shelf. Willa was a collector. She collected stuffed animals, dolls, posters, porcelain eggs, you name it. Every inch of her room was crammed with her collections. Mom, look at him. Willa gushed. Have you ever seen such cute little brown paws? And look at his big round eyes. They're practically glowing. Leaning on the counter, Gina, Willa's 11-year-old sister, started to whine. Mom, that's no fair. Willa already has enough stuffed animals to fill this whole store. So, Willa shot back. I can't help it if your room is bare, Gina. Gina made a face at her older sister. That's because every chance you get, you beg mum to buy you something else. Mum, get me this. Mum, buy me that. Gina mimicked. Girls, that's enough. Mrs. Stewart cut them off. Willa and Gina glared at each other. Willa, you're 12. Aren't you getting too old for teddy bears? Her mother asked. I can't help it, Mum, Willa replied. I want him. He's not like any other stuffed animal that I've ever seen. His eyes are weird, Gina commented. They are not, Willa protested, but she knew Gina was right. She could almost feel the bear studying her with those huge eyes of his. Willa, her mother said, there isn't any space left in your room. Where will you put it? I'll put old bear on the shelf and I will sleep with this one, Willa replied. Gina folded her arms. What's wrong with old bear? Nothing, Willa told her. I just love this one. She pressed him against her cheek. See how cuddly he is? Please, Mum. Mrs. Stewart hesitated. Well, Mum, that's not fair, Gina wailed. Willa's always getting stuff. What about my CD player? Gina, a CD player costs a lot more than a teddy bear, her mother answered sharply. That's something you can ask for on your birthday. Mum, please? Willa said, clutching the bear. All right, her mother said, sighing, but this is it. Do you understand, Willa? Willa threw her arms around her mother. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Mum. On the other side of the counter, Willa could see Gina scowling at her. Sometimes I really hate you, Willa, Gina muttered. Willa waved the teddy bear in Gina's face. His name is Mr. Teddy, Gina, she announced, and you'd better be nice to him. As soon as Willa got home, she took Mr. Teddy up to her room to show him around. Here we are, she announced, opening the door. Her room was done all in peach, her favourite colour. To the right of the door stood her dresser, and on top of the dresser was her porcelain egg collection. Willa gently picked up each egg and told Mr. Teddy where it had come from. Next, she showed him all the rock star posters that covered her walls. Then she went through the two long shelves above her dresser, crammed with stuffed toys. When she finished with the animals, Willa took Mr. Teddy over to the doll collection in the other corner. Willa had been collecting dolls the longest and had the biggest collection of anyone she knew. Still clutching Mr. Teddy, Willa crossed the room to her bed. Hello, old bear, she said. She reached onto the pillow and picked up her ragged old teddy bear, the one she'd slept with since she was a baby, and kissed him on top of his head. You're going to sleep over here now, she said, crossing back over to the shelves. She pushed aside a stuffed unicorn to make room for old bear. Sleep tight, she told him. Gina poked her head into the room. Who's in here, she asked. No one, Willa replied. Then who are you talking to? Uh, Nobody. Gina's eyes lit up. You were talking to your stuffed animals again, weren't you? She started laughing at Willa. Shut up, Gina. Willa snapped. You're mad because you didn't get a CD player. I am not, Gina answered. I'm mad because you have mum wrapped around your little finger. Every time you ask for something, she buys it. She stormed out, slamming the door behind her. Willa glanced down at Mr. Teddy. Don't worry about Gina, she whispered, carefully placing him on her pillow. I bet she wishes that she had a special bear too, but she doesn't. You're all mine, Mr. Teddy, all mine. 
That night, Willa slept with Mr. Teddy hooked in her arm. At first, it felt funny to sleep with something so soft and fluffy. All the fur on old Ted had worn off a long time ago, but Mr. Teddy seemed to be staring at her. Every time she turned or moved, she felt his big eyes watching her. Willa woke up early the next morning. The sun had barely begun to rise, and outside, she could hear birds chirping. Something didn't feel right. She lifted her head and stared down at her bed. Where was Mr. Teddy? She groped around her covers but couldn't feel him anywhere. Where was he? Willa pulled herself up, squinting in the dim light. Had Mr. Teddy fallen out of bed? She peered down at the floor. Nope, not there. She shook her covers again then leaned over to check underneath the bed. Are you there, Mr. Teddy? She called out softly. A sock and some dust balls stared back at her. Where could Mr. Teddy be? Willa's eyes moved up her dresser, then over to the windowsill above the doll corner. She caught her breath. Mr. Teddy sat propped up on the windowsill, staring back at her. His eyes seemed to be shining. Huh, Willa murmured. How did you get over there? She climbed out of bed and lifted him off the windowsill. Mr. Teddy, she scolded, what are you doing? Did you get up and move during the night? The bear's dark eyes glowed back at her. Stop staring at me like that, Willa laughed. You're giving me the creeps. She kissed the top of his head, then popped him on her pillow. Maybe I woke up and put him there myself and just don't remember, Willa said to herself. At breakfast, she caught Gina staring at her. What are you looking at? She asked sharply. Nothing, Gina smirked. Did you come into my room last night, Willa demanded. No, Gina replied, still smiling. Why would I? The next night, before she fell asleep, Willa made sure Mr. Teddy was hooked firmly in the crook of her arm. It took her a long time to fall into a restless sleep. She kept waking up and checking on Mr. Teddy, but he was always right there where she left him, in the bend of her arm, watching everything with those big, dark eyes of his. In a funny way, Willa felt as if he were guarding her. She woke up the next morning with a start. Immediately, she felt around for Mr. Teddy and gone again. Willa glanced suspiciously at the windowsill. Not there either. She sat up in bed and began to search around the room. Her eyes swept over the doll corner, the floor, then moved up the dresser. Hey, you! Willa cried out when she spotted Mr. Teddy on top of the dresser. What's going on here, Bear? What are you doing over there? She jumped out of bed and hurried over. She gasped when she saw the two porcelain eggs. They lay smashed under the big teddy bear. Mr. Teddy's eyes had an evil glow to them. Who did this? Willa demanded. Who broke these eggs? Willa tried to think it couldn't be Mr. Teddy. He didn't climb the dresser and plop down on the eggs. No way, so who could it be? The one person who was jealous of all her stuff. Gina! Willa shouted furiously. How could you do this? Willa stormed into Gina's room. Empty. Where was she? Willa stormed back into the hall and stood at the top of the stairs. Gina, I'm going to get you for this. Her mother appeared at the top of the stairs. Why are you shouting, Willa? Where's Gina? She left early for school, her mother said. Remember, she has chorus practice. Willa clenched her fists. Wait till she gets home tonight, she growled. She'll be singing a sad song when I get through with her. That afternoon, Willa paced the front hall, waiting for Gina to return home. She paced back and forth, back and forth, checking out the window every time she passed it. Finally, she saw Gina coming up the front walk. She angrily pulled open the front door to greet her. I know it was you who smashed my porcelain eggs last night, Willa uttered in a shaky voice. She blocked Gina's path. Gina pushed her aside. What are you talking about, Willa? Are you totally losing it? You know what I mean, Willa insisted. She followed her sister to the stairs. You broke my best eggs for no reason. Then you moved Mr. Teddy onto the dresser to make it look like he did it. What a sick, stupid joke. Gina stopped. I really don't know what you are talking about. Do too, Willa snapped. It had to be Gina. Who else could it be? You're just trying to get me in trouble with mum, said Gina. Leave me alone, Willa. I'm warning you. 
Later, when Willa went to bed, she shoved Mr. Teddy all the way under the covers. I want you to stay down there tonight, okay? She told him. She curled her body around his, then pulled her covers up to her neck. Nobody could get Mr. Teddy out now, Willa thought, at least not without waking her up. But Willa was wrong. The moment she woke up the next morning, Willa reached under the covers for Mr. Teddy. Gone again. Huh? Willa sat up wide awake. What's going on? She let out a shriek when she saw her dresser. The drawers had all been pulled out and turned upside down. Her clothing had been strewn in clumps and piles over the floor, angrily hurling herself out of bed. Willa kicked aside a pile of t-shirts. Gina! She shrieked. I'm going to murder you for this! Glancing up, she saw Mr. Teddy. He grinned at her from the top of the dresser. Willa grabbed him. Why is this happening to me? She screamed. Tell me this is a dream. Mr. Teddy's eyes glowed brighter. Willa heaved him onto the bed. She flew down the stairs and burst into the kitchen and Gina was eating a bowl of cereal. Why did you do it, Gina? Willa demanded, clenching her hands into tight fists. Why, why, why did you sneak into my room and mess it all up and... Gina gazed up from her breakfast. I haven't been near your room, honest. A grin broke out on her face. Willa let out a furious cry. See, Mum, see, she's smiling. Mrs. Stewart narrowed her eyes at Gina. Have you been playing mean jokes on your sister, she demanded. No, no way, Gina screamed. Why are you blaming me for something I didn't do? I just smiled because it was funny. I didn't do anything, really. Willa stared hard at Gina. I know you're lying, she said softly. You're a liar, Gina, a total liar. I am not, Gina shouted. She scraped her chair back from the table and jumped up. You're the liar, she told Willa. You're just trying to get me in trouble for no reason. She turned and stormed out of the kitchen. Stay out of my room, Gina, Willa called after her. You'll be sorry. I mean it. I really do. That night, before climbing into bed, Willa shoved her dresser back up against her door. There, she said, pressing Mr. Teddy's soft body against her arm. That should keep Gina out of here. What do you think, Mr. Teddy? Mr. Teddy's round black eyes glowed back at her. She slept restlessly again that night, feeling hot. She kicked off her covers. She turned onto one side, then the other. She had strange nightmares, and when she woke up the next morning, before she opened her eyes, she reached out for Mr. Teddy. Gone. Willa's eyes shot open. She screamed. The dresser had been pushed into the middle of the room. She sat up, her heart pounding. My my room, she murmured. Swallowing hard, she stood up and gazed around her room. Her posters, they had all been ripped from the walls and crumpled onto the floor. Willa's eyes moved to the shelves, her stuffed animals. A cold, sick feeling spread through her stomach. Nearly all the animals had been pulled apart. Shredded. Bits of them lay strewn across the room, a tail here, a piece of stuffing there. Their eyes had been torn out of their heads. Their arms and legs ripped from their bodies. Willa staggered to a doll corner. Every doll had been broken and torn apart. They lay in heap of arms, scraps of clothing, broken heads, patches of hair. Hey! Willa raised her eyes to the top of the shelf. Mr. Teddy stood there triumphantly, his eyes glowing happily. In one raised paw, he held an arm from one of her dolls. No, Willa murmured. No, please no. Mr. Teddy suddenly toppled forward. His outstretched arms reached for Willa's throat. Willa let out a shriek and dived out of the way. The bear landed on the floor with a soft thud. Willa spun around, tripping over parts of dolls and stuffed animals. She plunged out of her room, downstairs into the kitchen. Willa, what's wrong? What is it? demanded her mother. Mum, come up to my room, she sobbed. Everything I own, all my dolls, my animals. Gina wrecked it all, she cried furiously. Huh? Mrs. Stewart's face twisted in surprise. Gina? Yes, Gina, Willa declared. She broke into my room last night, Mum. She wrecked everything. Everything. But that's impossible, Willa's mum cried. Gina wasn't home last night, Willa. Don't you remember? She had a sleepover at Maggie's house. Willa pressed her arms against her face. The room began to spin wildly. That's right. She remembered Gina wasn't even home last night. No, she backed out of the kitchen, hands against her cheeks, shaking her head. She didn't want to believe it. It 
couldn't be, but there was no other explanation. She ran blindly up the stairs. She grabbed Mr. Teddy off the floor. His eyes glowed up at her as Willa frantically ripped him to pieces. It was you after all, wasn't it? She cried, tearing off his arms, pulling at his white stuffing, letting it fly over the room. It was you, you, you. With a cry of fury, Willa tore off Mr. Teddy's head. I hate you, she shrieked. She tossed the head out of the window. Evil thing, now you're gone. You can do no more evil. Gasping for breath, her heart thudding, Willa stumbled across the room and pulled raggedy old bear off the shelf. She hugged him tightly. You've all I've got left, old bear. Everything else was destroyed by that evil thing. She clutched old bear gratefully. From now on, it's just you and me. Willa didn't see the pleased smile form on Old Bear's mouth. She didn't see his eyes begin to twinkle merrily. Next time, Old Bear thought to himself, maybe you won't be so quick to get rid of me, Willa. Maybe you've learned your lesson. You can't put me away on a shelf, not me. I'm your bear and I'm going to be with you for the rest of your life. Thank you, Traveller, for being here tonight and letting me be a part of your nightmares. I hope you find your way back real soon.